Secret Sevens, it's Natural Sciences. I'm Helen and I'm here to share the next few minutes with you and today we are going to be focusing on renewable energy sources. Now you may remember in our last lesson we came to the conclusion that non-renewable energy sources are not the answer in the long term. Yes, they provide us with so much of our energy that we need in the term in the way of uh, electricity and fuels. So they are very, very important sources of energy. But we cannot sustain the earth if we continue to throw all of the waste products from burning of fossil fuels into the atmosphere. We need to look for some solution to this because the non-renewable energy source supplies are limited. It means they are going to run out one day and they cause these, they cause these devastating environmental problems. So they're causing problems that are associated with something called climate change and global warming. So as I said to you last lesson, we need a new superhero. We need a hero not like coal and oil and natural gas. We need to look at something that is going to be renewable, something that there's an unlimited supply of, and very importantly, something that produces clean energy, that doesn't produce a lot of carbon dioxide and other greenhouse gases that are going to go into the atmosphere and cause problems with increasing the temperature of the earth. So looking at renewable energy sources, these are the ones that we're going to focus on today. We're going to be looking at solar energy, hydropower, wind energy, and something called biofuels. Now, as I was saying those words, could you identify the picture that is associated with it? Solar energy, hydropower, water energy, wind energy, and something we haven't even mentioned yet, biofuels. So our new superhero is going to hopefully present us with alternative energy sources that are going to save the world from the enhanced greenhouse effect. Let's start off talking about wind energy. Now what is wind? Well it's simply moving air and it can be used as a source of energy. Remember what I told you in our very first lesson on energy. The wind itself isn't energy but the wind is a source of energy. So how does that work? Well the wind blows these turbines around or these big blades around which cause a large turbine to turn. A turbine is simply something, a, a big piece of machinery that turns, but something's got to provide the energy to turn the turbine. Now in a coal powered um, power station, coal-fired power station, we would be burning the coal and that heat energy would be turning those uh, turbines. But now, what if we use something else and we didn't have to burn coal to turn the turbines? What if we use the wind, which is moving air, and the turbines were turned without burning a fuel? Well, that is exactly what wind power is all about. The turbines then are connected to a generator which produces electrical energy and the electrical energy can then whiz down all of the wires and magically arrive in your house or you could have a wind energy collector on your property if you were a farmer and you could have a windmill that is going to produce sufficient electricity to run your farm. So why do we call wind a renewable energy source? Well, we don't have to worry about there never being wind anymore. There will always be wind because wind is a phenomenon of where 
air and gases circulate from high pressure systems to low pressure systems out there in the in, in our atmosphere there's always wind it remember some of the terms we used previously we said that renewable fuels or energy sources are unlimited what are the advantages of using it can you think of why using wind power would be such a good idea well to me, maybe to you as well, wind is free. Okay, we don't have to pay for wind. We don't have to mine wind. We don't have to put people's lives in danger going into mines to get the wind. We also, there's no waste product. We are not going to be churning out greenhouse gases into the atmosphere. So that makes wind a very clean energy source. Are there disadvantages? Well, yes, they are. Well, there are. <laughs> there are these big windmills or wind turbines. They are huge and they don't always look very pretty. Right? We say they're not very aesthetically pleasing. You've got your beautiful landscape and you've got these big wind towers sticking up. So, yeah, it might not look nice, but to me, a power station with all of that black carbon uh, coming out of it and the carbon dioxide, that's, that's not very pretty either. So I don't really think a disadvantage is the fact that it looks ugly, but they are rather noisy. So as these turbines or the blades are turning, in order to turn the turbines, creates a lot of noise. So we couldn't put them right next to a housing area, for example, because they're going to make a lot of noise pollution. Even though it's clean, it's noisy. And also certain parts of the, the, the area, the globe, the countries, they, they don't have constant supplies of wind. So in Johannesburg, for example, that might not work so well. Although in Cape Town and on the coast, where there's a lot of wind, that is where we could plant a wind farm. So we've got to look at the pros and cons, but to me, the idea of free, clean energy is really a huge advantage. Let's talk about hydropower. So when we talk about this, or when we use this prefix, hydro, we are referring to water. Water can be used as an energy source. And remember I told you it's not just here's a dish of water or here's a glass of water, that's energy. Uh-uh, it isn't the water itself, it's what the water does. The water falls from a a height downwards and we can see that falling water is going to be able to turn turbines which is going to be able to run a generator to produce electricity. So instead of using wind to turn the turbines we're using the force of falling water. That is what we call hydropower. So why is it a renewable source? Well, we have lots of water on our planet and we could actually recycle the water. We could then pump the water to the top of this falling system again. And yes, that would take energy, but we would need to come to some balance where we produce more electricity than we use pumping the water back. So we need to possibly look at waterfalls. We need to look at dams. We need to look at tidal energy as well. The advantages, it's free again, and it's clean. It does not pollute the air. But the disadvantages are that in building hydroelectric schemes, we have to build dams at this point in time because the tides and waterfalls are not always as reliable as, as we would like them to be. So we build dams. And very often in building dams, we take away land that people were living on in order to allow the water to accumulate there. And that's, that's a huge problem socially and culturally, just taking up all this land. And we also know that when we dam a river, we 
produce probably water problems further down the river in that the people and the farmers and the towns and villages downstream of the river might not have such a huge water supply as they had before the dam. So we've got lots of social problems and disadvantages associated with hydropower. But we need to keep focusing on the idea that it's clean and it's free. It's not as free as wind power because this dam needs a lot of maintenance and not as much maintenance is needed with wind turbines. What about solar energy? Now there is a lot of energy in sunlight. We know that. It's the sunlight that the light itself that is used for photosynthesis for our green organisms and for our start of our food chain but it is the heat that comes from the radiation that comes from the sun that is what we what we refer to as what that heat that powers the earth solar panels can be used to absorb that radiant energy from the sun and transform that energy into what we call stored or potential energy and we can make electricity from that. You can heat your pool, you can heat your geyser, you can use it to run your lights and water systems, power water pumps and so on within an industry. So why do we call sunlight a renewable energy source? Because we can say that sunlight is forever, all right? We know that in a billions of years, the sun will no longer be, but we don't have to worry about that right now. It's not gonna happen now. So we could say that it's sunlight is forever and the advantages, it's free, it's clean. Disadvantages, at the moment, the technology to create solar panels is rather expensive. So it's much cheaper to use electricity that is produced from coal than it is to produce or to use electricity from, from solar power. Biofuels is a very, very interesting area. and We will talk about biofuels in the time to come, but biofuels is a fuel, so it can be used for cars, for example, produced from plant waste, and even animal waste, okay? Methane gas, which you know is a greenhouse gas, is produced by decomposing organic wastes. But what if instead of allowing that methane to go free into the atmosphere, what if we captured that methane? Here we go. We've got the breakdown of organic matter inside what we call a biodigester. We decompose the matter, or here we go, we could decompose it in a, a biofuel plant, and then we can use that methane, we can burn it to cause turbines to turn and to produce energy in the form of electricity. So we can see that instead of letting a gas that could be really dangerous to the, the enhanced greenhouse effect, to our atmosphere, to our earth, we capture that gas and we use that gas to make electricity. What are the advantages? Well, it's largely clean, it's free and Disadvantage is that instead of using sugarcane, corn, and wood for other purposes, particularly for feeding people and feeding animals, we're using the decomposing organic matter to make a biofuel. So many people say a problem with biofuels is that it's taking food away from people, it's taking food away from animals. But those are debates that we have to weigh up when we talk about what is the greater advantage, what do we need, what don't we need. But I hope you've actually seen that our new super 
uh, superhero has provided us with many new good alternatives to fossil fuels. That's it for today, grade sevens. I'll see you next time. Thank <laughs> you.